Okay, let's look at Mr. Peabody, who is age 47. He was admitted to ICU. He has a triple lumen central line. He also has a urinary catheter. He had a fever on the 1st of February. He had a, the catheter removed, or the subclavian central line catheter removed, replaced with a FIC. The fever continues. The urine culture was collected. It's E. coli. We have a blood culture collected. It was E. coli and Enterobacter. And he also has a blood pressure of 77 over 62. So could this BSI be considered secondary to UTI was your first question. And then you were supposed to figure out if this is a primary CLAPSI, identify an IWP, a DOE, an RIT, and an SBAP. So this is showcasing the um, HAI POA worksheet generator. If you haven't had a chance to work with that, I would encourage you to do that. So yours should look similar to mine, where the 2-3 urine culture of the E. coli, that's the IWP from 131 to 2-6. The 2-1 fever is used to meet the SUDI, so the date of event is 2-1, so this is an HAI. The uh, catheter was in place greater than two days on the date of event, therefore this meets a SUDI 1A CAUTI. So um, the SUDI RIT is from 2-1 to 214, and the SBAP is from 131 to 214. The 2-3 matching blood pathogen occurs within the secondary BSI attribution period, therefore it is considered secondary. So our teaching point here is that this is a SUDI 1A, says that RIT in an SBAP. And when you get these slides all um, within a few weeks, you will have this explanation to go with your slides when they're posted. Okay, so I'm going to give you a bonus question here. What if that urine culture that was collected was only 80,000 CFUs per mil? Same scenario, but could the BSI be secondary to a UTI? Ooh, we got lots of conversation going on. So, for the purpose of NHSN, in order for that bloodstream infection to be determined secondary to another site of infection, the following requirements must be met. At least one organism from the blood specimen must match the organism identified from the site-specific infection that is used as an element to meet the NHSN site-specific infection criterion, and the blood specimen is collected in the secondary BSI attribution period. This urine culture of 80,000 does not meet that criteria to be used as an element to meet the NHS and site-specific infection criteria. So, no infection identified. No IWP, no SBAP. That blood sample must be investigated as a primary BSI as an element or to meet another site-specific infection. Yeah, we got a lot of conversation on that, so think about that one. <laughs> okay, let's look at case two. So we have uh, Mr. Urea, who is age 77, who has a positive urine culture on 128 with greater than 100,000 proteus mirabilis and a fever. Fever continues on 130. On February 2nd, the Foley catheter is inserted by urology to gross hematuria and clots. We have a fever on 23. We have some dementia going on, and we have a positive urine culture of uh, E. coli that happens to be ESBL of greater than 100,000. So what is Mr. Urea's determination? So IWP, DOE, RIT, SBAP. So this is what you should have, except on your diagram, you don't have this little pop-up, of course. The reason why you will get this pop-up, should you use the POA, HAI, uh, uh, calculator is you have selected a calendar day that occurs in the POA time frame period defined as two days before and one day after inpatient admission for the purposes of NHSN surveillance and the determination of the repeat infection time frame if the date of the event is determined to be either of the two days prior to or the admit date then the date of event will be hospital day one. And this is one of your learning points. 
Likewise, the first day of the RIT will be hospital day one. So we have uh, 126 dysuria with 128 positive urine culture, median the CD1B, non cotty The DOE is 127, which is POA. RIT is set 127 to 29. The SBAP is 125 to 29. The 2-8 fever and the positive urine culture occur within the RIT. Therefore, this is not a new event. Additional pathogen is considered as part of the POA event, even though the catheter is in place greater than two days on 2-8. It does not become a cauti. So our teaching points, we have a SUDI 1B POA on a patient who is greater than 65 years of age by using this additional symptoms besides fever. When symptoms occur prior to admission, if the documented in the medical record and a symptom occurs within the IWP, the DOE becomes day one of admission. Do not change the device association during the RT. New uh, add a new do add a new pathogen. So let's say that this person didn't have this fever on 2.8. What if there was no temp on 2.8? There would be no CD met. So think about that. And I'm going to hand you off to Agasha. Thank you, Bonnie. Hi, everyone. My name is Agasha Katabarwa. I will be doing the um, Analyzing Catheter Associated Urinary Tract Infections group exercise. It is the next page from the exercise you just did right now. And I will give you 10 minutes to do it. But here's a scenario. So Sarah Savvy, a new infection preventionist for freestanding LTAC called Safe Hospital would like to know how her facility's cavity SIR is calculated. After gathering her data for the annual survey, she tells up 10,920 annual patient days and 329 annual admissions. Safe Hospital has two adult wards, E4 and W5, in one ICU, ICU unit. Safe Hospital observed five infections in E4, E4 ward and 980 folly days in this unit in 2018. So here is the table that you can also find in your SIR guide. And this is the model for um, County long-term acute care hospitals. So you should have this also in your um, booklet. So it includes your intercept, the variables included in the model and their parameter estimates, the um, standard error, the p-value, letting you know that these are um, statistically significant predictors. And at the bottom, it is important to note that the average length of stay is taken from the annual LTAC survey. Um, it is calculated as total number of patient days divided by total number of admission days. Um, this LTAC is a free, is, uh, setting is free... This, um, another, the asterisk at the bottom also says LTAC setting freestanding versus hospital versus within a hospital is taken from the annual LTAC survey. And oops, so I'll give you uh, seven minutes to work out the questions. I'm going to walk around. And if you have any questions, you can ask me or anyone that's walking around from the EMAT team. All right, I hope you guys have had enough time to look through everything. But if you don't, we'll just keep on going ahead. And I want to encourage you that we're going to go through these models and equations a couple of times this week. So if you didn't get it, do not lose heart. 
We're going to go over them multiple times in different presentations. And hopefully at the end of the week, you'd have a, a good grasp of what the equations are and how to utilize them. So the first one is calculate safe's average length of stay. And that is total annual patient days divided by total annual admissions. And um, in SAVES Hospital, we had 10,920 um, patient days divided that by, that by 329. You should have got 33.19. So the second question was calculate SAVES Hospital's predicted number of infections for E4 ward. And so this is the same equation that Prachi had, um, I guess, an hour ago. This is our negative uh, binomial equation. So I'm going to try to go through it quickly since we don't have enough time. But I will, after this, I'll go back into the audience. If you have any questions, just let me know. So this is basically the same thing as the y is equal to mx plus b equation in grade school. So your logit um, theta um, is y. Your intercept, that squirrely thing, is um, the alpha is what would have been the y-intercept. Your betas are slopes, and your x's are what the variables that you want to put into the model. So base, this is the model that we have. Um, so SAFE's hospital had greater than 27.52 um, average length of stay. So that is a, that's something to note. Um, we wanted to calculate the number of predicted days for E4 ward. So um, you look at the bottom of the table, you will be looking at the reference category, and SAFE's hospital was, I believe, a freestanding LTAC hospital. So take note of the number 0 0.1941. So here is our equation with all the numbers filled in. So our y-intercept was negative 6, which is the alpha, is negative 6.6068. Add that to our parameter estimate of the average length of stay, which is greater than 27.52. Um, and then add that to what our result would be of beta two times the second variable, which is a freestanding hospital. And then um, it was a word, the LTEC was a, our E4 is a word. So we use the parameter to estimate 0 0.3135. And at the end, you take the exponent of all that, multiply it by your catheter days, which was 980 catheter days. After doing all this, you should get 1.976 predicted infections. If you, didn't get not, not, if you didn't get this number of predicted infections and you really, really want to know why, just call me and I'll come over and I'll, we'll go through it together. Um, and I also noticed on this slide, the dividing, um, the division signs were gone. So let's just pretend that after observed infections, there was a divide sign divided by predicted infections. So we had five observed infections divided by 1.976 predicted infections, and that should give us an SIR score of 2.530. And the third question is, if the p-value of this SIR score is greater than 0 0.05, how can the results be interpreted? So the answer to this is SAVES Hospital observed catheter, observed catheter associated urinary tract infection are not statistically significantly more than the predicted number of infections based on the 215 national aggregate data. Question four, if the number of catheter days is days is in, in is in the same is the same in the ICU as in the ward, would the number of predicted infections be higher, lower, or the same as the ward? So you go ahead and do the exact same equation all over again. Um, and you should get 4.035 predicted infections. So if the number of catheter days was the same as in the ICU in the ward, the number of predicted infections would be higher. So um, this question was really put in to say, like, you know, if, if my locations change in my LTAC, you know, if I change from an ICU or a ward, I would not get the exact same, AC, um, same predicted number of infections. And if you divide 5 by 4.035, you would get a smaller SIR score. 
I hope you all got that, but I'll be in the audience if you guys want to talk to me and ask me questions. Thank you.